Well, good morning, saints. Welcome to you on this Sabbath day. Welcome to you on this Epiphany Sunday. You know, for centuries in the early church, for the first several hundred years, it was actually Epiphany Sunday, along with Easter and Pentecost, that were our greatest days of celebration. Over time, Epiphany Sunday has faded. Christmas has kind of taken over that space. But Epiphany Sunday is still important. It is a day when we typically celebrate one of three great themes. Epiphany Sunday is a day when we celebrate the arrival of the wise men from the East. Epiphany Sunday is also a time when we celebrate the baptism of Jesus. And finally, Epiphany Sunday is also a time when we recognize the beginning of the earthly ministry of Jesus. So you can see, this is a great day. It's a festival day. It's, a, it's Epiphany Sunday. We welcome you to it. I want to remind you that this afternoon at 4 o'clock, we'll be having the gathering. We'll be seated outside. Feel free to bring your own beach chair with you. You know, we dress casual, but we know it'll be a warm time of worship and praise. And we will also be celebrating communion at the gathering this afternoon. Remember, today after worship is the unhanging of the greens. Christmas and Advent decorations will be put away as we move back into what is called liturgically ordinary time. And we'll be serving pizza for those who can help us stay out, so it'll be anything but ordinary as we fellowship and, and help the church get ready for this new liturgical season. As you came in, you probably saw a number of poinsettias out on the, out on the patio. Those are free for the taking. Take one, take 20, take as many as you can fit in your car, but we invite you to take those poinsettias home with you. And this week, our studies and times of fellowship resume. So that means the Holy Yoga will be on Tuesday and Thursday. The pastor's Bible study is Tuesday mornings at 11 o'clock over in Guard. The women's Bible study has been delayed until February, and we'll give you a, a new starting date for that as, that as we become aware of that. Open Door resumes Tuesday at 2 o'clock, and The Chosen, the showing of season two of The Chosen, resumes this Wednesday night at 6.30, again in Guard Hall. If you have not seen The Chosen, it is an absolutely delightful depiction of the Gospels. It's a way, it has a way of, of making them come alive for us, and, and these characters become real people. So we really want to encourage you to come on Wednesday evening, and we, we can watch uh, and enjoy that time together. We also invite you to be sure and check the church calendar on the website for information about upcoming events. You know, our weekly Wednesday e-blasts also provide a great deal of information. But unfortunately, for as much information as they share, we, the readership of that is probably not as strong as we would like. So we really want to encourage you, when you, when you see that e-blast from the church, open it up, read it, and, and become aware of all the great things that are going on in the life of the church. I want to invite you now to please rise and join with me in our call to worship. The Lord is our light and our salvation. Whom shall we fear? The Lord is our Lord, but whom shall we be The Lord will protect us and guide us. Please be seated. I invite you to join with me in our opening prayer. Gracious God, on this Sunday, nearest the day that your church celebrates Epiphany, help us to be as persistent in our dedication as the wise men of old who sought out the Christ child. As we bow in reverence before you, please receive our expressions of gratitude for Christ, for life, for family, for friends, and for the privilege of worshiping you. Through Christ our Savior we pray. Amen. Strength arises, we wait upon the Lord, we will wait upon the Lord, we will wait upon the Lord. Strength arises, we wait upon the Lord, we will wait upon the Lord, we will wait upon the Lord our God. You reign forever, our hope, our, hope, our, our strong hope. You won't grow weary. 
Strength or righteous, we wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord. Strength or righteous, we wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord our God. He reigns forever. Our hope, our strong deliverer. You are the together wonderful to me please be seated the psalmist reminds us the lord is merciful 
and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. He will not always accuse, nor will he keep his anger forever. With this knowledge, then, we may confess our sins before God and one another with confidence. So I invite you now to please join with me in our prayer of confession. Merciful God, we go about our days failing to proclaim your saving power with our voices or with our actions. We do not live as ones saved, but rather as people filled with fear and doubt. We often choose what is expedient, not what is right. We close our eyes and ears to those who are in need and close our hearts to those we claim to love. We are quick to hurt others and slow to right our wrongs. Forgive us, O oh God, for all the ways we have not lived into our relationship with you. Forgive us and overwhelm our sinfulness with your grace as we confess our sinfulness before you now. Amen. Friends, God does not deal with us according to our sins, nor repay us according to our iniquities. For as the heavens are high above the earth, so great is God's steadfast love towards those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far he removes our transgressions from us. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. And now I invite you to please rise and let's sing together our praise of thanksgiving for God's great mercy and grace. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Ghost as it was in the beginning is now and ever shall be world without end amen amen and now as god's forgiven people we invite you to share that joy that you already have as god's beloved either right here in the worship center or with people in your own home or through comments on Facebook. Let us now greet each other with the joy of the Lord.
It is so much fun to greet each other. So let's continue to do that outside on the patio today and just continue to pass the peace of Christ to one another. Well, now we are blessed to have Susie as she leads us through the children's time. Good morning. Good to see everyone this morning. Um, we will indeed miss Miss CM and her insightful um, fuzzy friends. <laughs> However, I have a friend of my own today. This is Barry. Um, I have two daughters, Melanie and Hannah. And when Hannah was born, she got a, an array of stuffed animals. And Barry became sort of her single most beloved pal. And when Hannah was little, wherever you would see Hannah, you would see Barry. And they would have meals together, and they would play together, and they would sleep together, and um, Barry and Hannah were companions. And I think that Barry offered to Hannah not only that companionship, but also I think Barry helped Hannah feel safe and comfortable and secure. And sometimes, I think Barry even offered Hannah a little advice. Um, so that brings me to today's sermon, the title, Come Holy Spirit. So I think Pastor Annette's going to be uh, talking about the Holy Spirit. And the qualities that I just described with Barry are the very same qualities that the Holy Spirit offers us. We cannot see the Holy Spirit like Hannah could see and feel and hold um, Barry, but we certainly can feel the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit does the very same things. The Holy Spirit is God. Jesus sent us the Holy Spirit so that we could feel God, to uh, understand God, to feel comforted by God, to be guided by God, and really did the very same things that Barry did for Hannah. In the Bible, Jesus tells us that a helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things and remind you of everything I have said to you. And so, um, I hope that all of us, all of us in the congregation, um, children, girls, and boys, that we keep um, our senses um, alert for the Holy Spirit so we can feel and be comforted and be taught and guided by the Holy Spirit. So, shall we sing our prayer song? Dear God, thank you so much for sending us the Holy Spirit who is there to comfort and guide and advise and to help us feel safe and to know you most importantly. We ask this prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. I don't know what it is about stuffed animals and bears. Our daughter also had a bear. <laughs> had an had a equally creative name, Bear Bear, <laughs> that she sleeps with to this day. Important character in her life. That was a wonderful, wonderful time, Susie. Thank you. <laughs> Our first lesson for today comes from the book of Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 43, verses 1 through 7. I invite you now to hear God's word for us this morning. But now thus says the Lord, he who created you, O Jacob, he who formed you, O Israel, do not fear, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name, you are mine. 
When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And through the rivers, they shall not overwhelm you. When you walk through fire, you shall not be burned, and the flame shall not consume you. For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. I give Egypt as your ransom, Ethiopia and Seba in exchange for you, because you are precious in my sight and honored, and I love you. I give people in return for you, nations in exchange for your life. Do not fear, for I am with you. I will bring your offspring from the east and from the west. I will gather you. I will say to the north, give them up. And to the south, do not withhold. Bring my sons from far away and my daughters from the ends of the earth. Everyone who is called by my name, whom I created for my glory, whom I formed and made. Here ends our first lesson for today. Come, Holy Spirit, heavenly dove, with all thy quickening powers, kindle a flame of sacred love in these cold hearts of ours. Awake our souls to joyful songs, let pure devotion rise, till praise employs our thankful tongues, and doubts forever die. Come, Holy Spirit, heavenly dove, with all thy quickening powers, come shed abroad the Savior's love, and that shall kindle ours. Please be seated. Our second lesson from today is from the book of Luke, the third chapter, verses 15 through 17 and 21 through the 22nd. Hear the word of the Lord. As the people were filled with expectation and all were questioning in their hearts concerning John, whether he might be the Messiah, John answered all of them by saying, I baptize you with water, but one who is more powerful than I is coming. I am not worthy to untie the thong of his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fork is in his hand to clear his threshing floor and to gather the wheat into his granary. But the chaff he will burn with unquenchable fire. Now, when all the people were baptized, and when Jesus also had been baptized, and was praying, the heaven was opened, and the Holy Spirit descended upon him in bodily form like a dove, and a voice came from heaven, You are my Son, the Beloved. With you I am well pleased. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let's pray. Lord, we just pray that you will take my words and turn them into the Holy Spirit words, Lord. Touch hearts and spirits in this worship center, on Facebook, at home. May people hear your voice. May they be nudged by you and your spirit. So we thank you. And with expectant heart, we welcome whatever is next. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. At the start of each new year, I am reminded of how quickly time flies and how quickly things change with time. 
Just look at the past two years. It seems that nothing is how it used to be. Even what we now call the, the new normal seems to change each day. Remember before the pandemic, how easy it used to be to go shopping. Do you remember that? Everything you wanted was available and in stock for significantly less money in most cases too. So the week before Thanksgiving, which is quite some time ago now, our dishwasher stopped working. Now, two years ago, we would just have gone to Lowe's, compared the options, and had one delivered and installed either later that same day or maybe, maybe the next day. Well, when our dishwasher broke this time, we went to all the appliance stores within driving distance. Oh, there were plenty of floor models to, on display that you could see. But every time we asked about the availability, we were told every dishwasher was out of stock or back order. No, nope, sorry, we don't have that one. Nope, no that one, neither that one. They didn't even know they were gonna get them in. So we asked the em employee, like, how about you tell us what do you have in stock? So he pointed out towards the ocean and he said, all our inventory is out there on a shipping container waiting to get into port. And then he said, hey, I'm a surfer, so maybe I can pick one up while I'm out there for you. <laughs> well, very funny, but I still needed a dishwasher. So we asked him to call if anything became available. And when he did call us a couple of days later, he said he had a dishwasher that he could sell to us. But unfortunately, due to staffing shortages, there was no one available to actually be able to deliver it until the new year. Well, so what are you about to do? Well, I guess what I did, I bought a wooden dish rack got some gloves, and started hand washing all the dishes. So nostalgic, right? And I also had to hire my personal dishwasher, Gracie. She does a fabulous good job with licking all the dirty dishes. However, if you come over to our house for a meal, please bring your own plate and utensils so you can bring them home after and wash them yourself. <laughs> Don't leave them at my house. It's nostalgic, but it's not that much fun. <laughs> so much has changed. I'm sure all of you have your own experiences to share. Yes, some are comical, but others are more serious, of course. It's like this world has been turned upside down. Every morning when I look out at the ocean at the massive ships with loaded containers lined up waiting to get into the ports, I am struck by the changes. All the things that I'm not used to seeing, at least not since I came to this country, we see the empty shelves at the supermarket. Some weeks there are no paper products. Other weeks you can't find certain food that you always used to buy, depending, of course, what part of the supply chain that's being affected that week. And I know people are still fe being fearful, even fearful and stockpiling canned goods, non-perishable items, hoarding, in anticipation of things getting worse again. So how, as Christians, are we supposed to respond to all this? Everything is so confusing and ever-changing. How did we get here? And what's next? 
looking at the passage that I just read, at the people standing there on the banks of the Jordan River, we see that they too were confused. This was unlike anything they have ever experienced. They had been waiting and waiting and preparing for the Messiah, whom of course they had never seen. Was it John the baptizer? Was he the Messiah? John told them that no, he, it wasn't him. He was not the Messiah. He was only going to be there to baptize them with water. The Messiah would baptize them with, with the Holy Spirit, with fire. They sure had never heard or seen anything like that before. They too must have been filled with anxiety. Like, what's going on? I wonder, what would it be like if this scene took place today in our current world? How would people react to John, who wore camel's hair and, and preached in the desert about repentance, looking like a wild man, though he was doing kingdom work? I wonder what we would do with him today. Call a mental institution and having put him, in, put him away? I don't know. But here we are in the year 2022, looking out past the shoreline, not just wondering what's on those ships, but wondering what's going on in our world today, wondering what's going to happen next. What more effects have we yet to feel from the pandemic? Some are fearful, panicked, depressed, anxious. Some can think of no action to take other than stockpiling toilet paper and canned goods. But however we react, every person in the world has either been infected or affected in some way. Professor Tamar Rodney published an article recently in John Hopkins Medical Journal explaining how the pandemic has caused many to experience post-traumatic stress disorder, PTSD. She says that the risk for people developing PTSD has never been higher than now. She says that one of the unique challenges of addressing COVID-19 related trauma is the sheer omnipresence of the disease and the degree to which it has impacted our lives, your life and my life. The pandemic has been an escalating series of events that have impacted our social, our medical, our emotional lives. She explains that it's not just the outcome of death that we fear, there is the fear of getting it, the fear of losing connection with individuals. There's the fear of isolation. There are sacrifices that people are making every single day, which are equally traumatic compared to the virus itself. So just as we are standing here watching from the shorelines here in Southern California, Confused by the new and ever-changing normal, our ancestors stood on the shorelines of the Jordan River wondering who the Messiah is and what his arrival meant. I'm sure they were feeling some of the symptoms of what we now call PTSD. We have a lot in common with them but there's also a very critical difference between them and us. We already know the Messiah is Jesus Christ. They didn't know that. We already know that we have been claimed by Jesus in our baptism. They didn't know that. And the greatest thing that we can be certain of that they did not know is that we in our baptism, have already been cleansed from our sins, redeemed and, and saved for eternity. So
So as we stand at the shorelines, what the world is experiencing right now, as we can see and feel the, the chaos and the uncertainty, we don't need to stand in, in fear or confusion. We stand in full confidence that we have a personal, intimate friendship with Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit residing within us, within each one of you, within us. There has been many attempts to describe the Holy Spirit, but my absolutely favorite is that of the Holy Spirit is like a flowing, sacred river. John Philip Newell, he is the former warden of Iona Abbey in the Western Isles of Scotland, he wrote about Celtic Christianity. And he said, the shoreline where land and sea meet is a lineal space in the Celtic world. It's a portal between the known and the unknown. And we are close to the beginning of life and to earth primordial rhythms, tasting the sacred, knowing it with all our senses, with our body's wisdom. And it's in that space we have one foot, as if it were in the human realm and the other in the non-human from which we have come, from the divine. We live as part of God's family, and with his gift of the Holy Spirit, we're able to participate in every aspect of Jesus' revelation. God came to us, claimed us, saved us, and gave us the Holy Spirit. And that's where you belong, as a citizen of God's kingdom. That's your home. So I know there's a lot of stuff going on. There's a lot of chaos and the unknown. But let's not get swept up by anything else that the world tells us about how to live and how to react. We don't live in fear or confusion. We live in the full awareness that we are not alone, but that God is with us, holding us and lovingly leading us forward to whatever is next. He is already here right now. So come, come Holy Spirit. When you stand by the shoreline, instead of focusing your eyes on the unknown, Focus on what we already know and stand firm in the real promise of Jesus Christ to whom you already belong. Focus instead on the bright light of each star that you can see, the sunset that's painted with wide, warm brush strokes by the Creator Himself to remind you that He is with you right now. But more than anything else, notice, just take a notice and look at the flowing waters of that ocean and let them remind you of your own baptism. Sure, you might not get the experience that the heavens opening up, the dove coming down, or the voice of God, like what happened when Jesus was baptized. But remember that deeply within you, there is the living waters of the Spirit that gives you meaning and purpose in every moment in your life, in every breath that you take, whether you're sick or healthy or joyful or sad or depressed. You already have that within you. That's not something that the world can give to you. That is a gift of God. God has already claimed us, saved us, and given us the Holy Spirit. What more do you need? I mean, maybe a dishwasher would be nice. But then again, maybe I can live without that. And a lot of other things too. Maybe I don't need that. 
Just maybe you and I already have everything that we need for a peaceful, joyful, and meaningful journey ahead, whatever comes next. So I want to leave you with a Celtic prayer, and it's a beautiful illustration of the Holy Spirit, who the Spirit is within you. So awake, my soul. Take the flow of the divine deep within you. Awake it to every creature and in every creature, in every woman, in every man. It is a river of the resurrection, the promise of new beginnings. Awake, O oh my soul, to the flow of the deep divine within you. Awake, O oh my soul, awake. And so it is. The Spirit is awake within you right now, right here. Amen. We give, not because we have to, but out of thanksgiving for all that God has done for us. During this past season of Advent and Christmas, we are especially mindful of God's love, of God's provision, and God's care. And now on this Epiphany Sunday, we bring our gifts, our tithes, and our offerings. I invite you now to join with me in prayer, and you can leave those offerings in the baskets as you leave. Let's pray together. Loving God, like wise men of old, we have come bearing gifts of thankfulness, wonder, and praise. We ask that you would receive and bless these offerings, set them apart for a special purpose that reflects your loving will for humanity. May they further the work of your kingdom. May they help spread the good news of Jesus Christ. And may they serve your desire, your will, your passion for grace, compassion, justice and mercy may they encourage the ministries of this church and every church amen as i walk down Life's winding pathway, time after time, trouble seem to block the way. And when I need a helping hand to guide me, I call on him in my silent prayers. Oh, bless the day my Savior calls me right by his side. I'll take my place, I'll praise his name and shout his glory. Oh, how I long to see his face. And in the hour of my deepest darkness, so oh, it shines down its light so I can see. When the days are long and the nights are lonely, I know that he'll be there to come for me. Oh, bless the day my Savior calls me right by his side. I'll take my place, I'll praise his name and shout his glory. Oh, how I long to see his face. I'm glad to know that he walks beside me and that he'll stay right till the very end. 
My heart is filled with that love inside me. I know that I'll always have a friend in him. Oh, bless the day my Savior calls me right by his side. I'll take my place. I'll praise the name and shout his glory. Oh, how I long to see his face. Oh, how long to see his face. We remind one another that Jesus welcomes everyone at this table. No one is turned away. If you seek God's presence, come and eat. If you are hungry for, for this spiritual food, come and eat. If you have questions and doubts, come and eat. If you feel unworthy, come and feast at this table that he has set for you. This table is spread for all of us that we each might experience God's abundant and unconditional love. So friends, behold what you are. Become what you receive. Let's pray together. Lord God, as you once claimed us in the Spirit's waters and number us among your own beloved, give us a deep desire and power to do your active work to role model your love to everyone that we meet, and to live holy and joyful lives. Keep us faithful in your service until Christ comes in final victory when we shall feast with all your saints in the joy of your eternal presence. Through Christ, with Christ, in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor are yours, almighty God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And on the night when our Lord was betrayed, he took the bread, and after giving thanks to God, he broke it. And he gave it to his disciples, saying, This is my body given for you. Take and eat. Do this in remembrance of me. And in the same way, Jesus took the cup after supper, saying, this cup is the new covenant sealed in my blood, shed for you for the remission of sins. Whenever you drink of it, do so in remembrance of me. Friends, every time we eat this bread and we drink from this cup, we proclaim the life, the death, and the resurrection of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ until he comes again. And he shall. In just a moment, our elders will come forward. We will set up two stations right here at the foot of these, of these central aisles. There will also be a station set up back by that back camera and back by the uh, back rope area there. We invite you to come forward, but if for any reason uh, you would like to be served in your seat, simply nod to those folks in the back, and they will come and serve you where you are. When you come forward, we will give to you a piece of bread. We invite you to take a cup. You can partake. And then you can leave the cups in the, the little baskets that are right here in the front of the center aisle that you will then use to go back to your seats. Will all the elders please come forward? Please come.
Please join with me in prayer. Oh God, how grateful we are for this family meal that you have prepared for us, most gracious God. As we have gathered around your table, might we be open to receiving the gift of your love in the food that we have shared. Let it nourish us when we feel depleted, sustain us when times are difficult, comfort us when we are sorrowful, and enhance our joys when our cups overflow. Let it be that the meal that we have shared will enable us to nurture others through the gift of this bread of life. For the meal that we have eaten, O oh God, make us truly thankful. Almighty God, the holiday is over, but the work of Christmas is just beginning. Guide us, loving God, as we follow in the footsteps of the one whose birth we have celebrated once again. Grant to us the grace to order our lives so that others might know that we have dealt in, knelt in Bethlehem and worshipped the newborn king. On the threshold of this new year, let us remember to follow the star instead of the crowd. If we lose our way, help us to remember, O oh God, the angel songs and the gift born to us in the darkness of night and in the depths of winter, that we might have life and have it abundantly. As the light from the star guided the wise men of old, O oh God, so might your love shine from within us to encircle and embrace all those who have lost their way. We ask that you would minister to each according to your perfect wisdom and care. Grant peace, grant healing, grant clarity, grant direction. The holiday is over, but the work of Christmas is just beginning. And so let it begin with us as we pray with gratitude the prayer of the one who calls us to new life, Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray when we say together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. We bless the name of Christ the Lord. We bless him for his holy word, who loved to do his Father's will and all his righteousness fulfill. We follow him with pure delight to sanctify his sacred rite, and thus our faith with water seal to prove obedience that we feel. By grace we of our Father cry, by grace the Comforter comes nigh, and for thy grace our love shall be forever only, Lord, for thee. Please be seated. And as we always do every week, we'll remain seated till after the postlude. And when you see Pastor Jim and I walk out, please join us afterwards as we continue to uh, joyfully uh, create relationships, new relationships perhaps today. Um, but it will continue, not only in here, but outside on the patio and throughout the rest of the week as well. Well, what else can we say more than we have worshipped together you know that you have the Holy Spirit living within you. So tune into that. Awake, my soul, awake as the Holy Spirit is there. So you already have everything. You don't need anything else. Don't let anyone rob you of that joy that's living deeply within you. So as you go out today, may you know that you are loved, that the Lord is with you. So as you go with compassion and joy and the peace of the Lord ahead of you, around you, caring you when needed, and knowing that you truly are blessed as God's child. So go in peace. Amen. <laughs> As 
as we go on our way. May we be kept in safety and love. May grace and compassion find their way to every soul. May this be our blessing. Amen. 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 May this be our blessing. Amen. 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 May this be our blessing. Amen.